If you've ever forgotten to lock your heel before you start skiing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, especially by me. Hey guys, Kick Rip here. Today we're going to be talking about shoes. Shoes. She didn't hear me. Namely, boots. And I've got a lot of really cool boots here. Uh, to start off, who am I? Um, I'm a guy with a lot of boots. That's about it. I'm a big winter sports enthusiast. I love skiing, climbing, hiking, camping, slowly but surely getting into mountaineering and milsims, if you couldn't tell. So I got a lot of questions on some of my previous videos asking about what kind of footwear do I wear. So if you're a fan of the channel, if you've been here before, you know that I am a big fan of military surplus. And that's mainly because it gives you a lot of capability at a lower cost. But not everything that I have on here is going to be surplus because surplus is not always better. Although I like cool kit, I don't believe that something being cool is the reason why you should buy something. This is going to be more so of a general overview of boots themselves and what you should be looking for for different applications. So I'm gonna throw some definitions at you that are going to be extremely generalized. If you feel that I missed something, please leave it in the comments, but I wanna keep this as brief as possible. So across the pond in Europe, our friends are not just sticklers for everything on your body being made of wool. They're really good at classifying winter gear. They got those Alps and they know what they're doing. So over here stateside, you generally see like jungle boots, uh, winter boots, and then Arctic boots. That's not the case over there. They like to be a lot more specific. So they break boots into four different categories. That's going to be B0, B1, B2, and B3. B0 being the lightest, most flexible boot, and then B3 being the stiffest and most technical boot. So first, let's start off with a B0 boot. B0 is gonna be something like this, your Merrill Moabs. These are Merrill Moab 3s. They are relatively cheap, especially compared to some of the other things that we have on the table here. And these are extremely flexible. These are not going to be used for anything technical, but they're very lightweight. They're very comfy. And you can take these backpacking for uh, hundreds of miles, probably more like, you know, 100 miles before they start falling apart. But that is because they are a synthetic boot. And synthetic boots, uh, I always seem to destroy in about a season or two. So when it comes to trekking, trail running, backpacking, anything more casual like that, the B0 flexible lightweight boot is going to be what you are going to want. Now there's not a lot of cool attachments for these things, but something that greatly supplements a boot like this is going to be a short gaiter. A gaiter is going to keep rocks, dirt, and crud from getting down into your boot, as well as giving you a little bit of water protection and just general abrasion resistance against the boot itself. These are the Outdoor Research Rocky Mountain Low Gaiters, and these are more of a soft shell gaiter. These are gonna work for most of the things. I know they are not surplus, however, there are a lot of really cool high-speed guys that like to wear them. So if you get yourself a good pair of leather upper boots, something like this Danner Combat Hiker, that is going to save your feet when carrying any sort of load. These are pretty flexible, but they're a little bit stiffer. Anything that is going to have a full leather upper and a really aggressive tread is going to be great for anything super serious. So when it comes to carrying some serious weight on your back, uh, these are going to be what you want. These are really awesome three season boots. Uh, I prefer Gore-Tex, but they don't have to be Gore-Tex. I usually take these when I go camping because if I've got a really big pack on, these are gonna save my ankles. I've also taken these to Milsim West because these are a serious combat boot without being too big and ridiculous. Uh, now, the Danner Combat Hiker is actually just the military contract version of the Danner Crater Rim boots. Now, those are about $400, whereas these surplus models of the exact same boot are gonna be about 200. Now, some of you might realize that this looks a little dark for uh, a combat hiker. If you just hit it with a little bit of oil, wax, it's going to darken that boot a little bit. I didn't like that tan color. Nothing around me is really tan, so I just wanted something that was gonna be dark brown, like the dirt. Now, much like the Merrill Moabs, uh, putting a little short gaiter on here is gonna help keep crap from going down inside of your boot. And these can really take you down into some pretty low temperatures. And it's all really dependent on your sock. And we're not gonna be covering socks in this video because that's more of a base layer video that will be coming soon. But if you do wear a good wool sock, that's gonna get you 
way down there in the temperature range. Now, if it is getting too cold and your feet start going numb, there are some people who will bring a completely different set of boots. And that honestly sucks in the shoulder seasons because it might be like a beautiful 50, 60 degree day. And then at night, it's gonna drop down into below freezing. So instead of carrying a whole nother pair of boots, it might be a good idea to have something like this. This is a Gore-Tex overboot. It's specifically the Ski March boot. And I'm not too sure of the history on this, but they are made by Adventure Tech, the same guys that make the, the DCU and Desert Night camel parkas. And these aren't just waterproof, but they're also insulated. So when you put this over your super good leather upper three season boot, that's gonna help you get into that fourth season without spending too much money or adding too much weight to your pack. These are fairly lightweight because they just use closed cell foam in order to insulate your foot. And every time I found these, they've only been about $45. So these are really cool, but they're not very common. But Outdoor Research and some other really great companies make insulated overboots and they add a lot of capability and they essentially give you a modular boot system. So I think that that's really cool. Now this has a cinch strap up here at the top, keep that snow from working its way down your leg. And it has a full Velcro fastener in the front. It's got an ankle strap, so that's gonna keep your foot seated inside and not allow too much play between your actual boot and the overboot. And once we open this guy up, here we'll see I have my other combat hiker on the inside there. So, so you can see how this thing opens up. It's full Gore-Tex on the inside. And you can see here, it's got this closed cell foam material on the inside. That is what's going to give you your insulation, a lot like an ISO mat or a ground mat. But although these are Gore-Tex, these are not waterproof. This, this Velcro flap in the front here is not going to stop water. It's not gonna be waterproof against, you know, standing in a puddle, but it's gonna do great for just some splashing and especially snow. Wet snow, dry snow, this thing's gonna do a really good job of, of keeping your boot dry and it's also Gore-Tex, so it's going to breathe. And then down here on the bottom, we have a reinforced nylon material for durability. And then on the bottom here, you'll also see that it doesn't actually have a traditional boot tread. It just has a nylon sole with these rubber dots coming off. And I'll tell you right now that there are no traditional boot treads that are going to do well on ice. Now I know Vibra makes their Arctic grip soles. None of them are going to stop you from slipping, but something like this is actually gonna do a really great job when it comes to post holing, which is just stepping in the snow without a snowshoe, as well as, you know, stability on ice. So these are the Columbia Bugga boots, and these are just traditional snow boots. Snow boots are just insulated hiking boots, and these are no different. They're still very flexible. They're honestly, I think these are more flexible than the Danner Combat Hikers. This is honestly a poor example of a B2 boot. So essentially a B0 boot would use a B0 crampon, which is going to essentially be micro spikes. A B1 boot would use B1 crampons, which are essentially universal crampons that are gonna work on any boot that doesn't have toe or heel welts. And then a B2 boot, kind of like this Columbia Bugga boot, is going to work with B2 crampon that use a heel clip and then a toe bail in the front. And a toe bail is essentially this little guy right here. Instead of using a toe clip like on a ski boot, instead it's going to use this piece of plastic that's going to hug the toe box of your boot and then it's going to clip in the back. I'll, I'll get more into that later. This, however, is not really a good B2 boot. It's just an insulated hiking boot. Now, I don't really use these for anything too serious, mainly just kind of around towners when it's cold, as well as shoveling the driveway. So these have 200 grams of insulation. That's pretty standard. Uh, I'm not gonna complain about that. These do keep my feet warmer than the combat hikers, depending on the sock that I'm using. Um, with a good sock, these will probably get you down to like zero degrees Fahrenheit. These are honestly not too expensive. These things run for about like 130 to 200. These are also waterproof. These will do great against snow and slush. But if you walk through tall, wet grass, when it whips against the, the tongue of this boot, uh, it is going to punch straight through and your feet are going to be swimming in a pool of water for about 12 hours straight. Ask me how I know. That was a miserable American Milsim game, but I stayed till the end. This little metal clip here at the front, that's going to be good for attaching a nice big gator like this. This does in fact cover up that very not waterproof tongue and that's going to make this a lot more 
water resistant. I stepped in snow up to above here and I was just fine because this can cinch down very nicely and it will keep the snow from getting down your gator. And then here on the bottom, I have these Catula Exo Spikes. These are awesome. Um, and I'll tell you right now, when it comes to fourth season, you know, winter outdoor recreation solution, a good pair of insulated snow boots, 200 grams is more than enough. And then a good pair of micro spikes or C0 crampons to keep you from sliding around, and falling off a cliff, that's never good. As well as a nice tall boot gaiter. Uh, this is going to be like a 90% solution for most outdoor recreational usage. We're going to look at a pair of mucklucks. These are US Air Force N1B muckluck boots. These are some of the warmest boots that you can get aside from the bunny boot. But uh, these are awesome because they're very lightweight and they're very packable. Now, these are not waterproof. These are made of canvas. So that's really just cotton. And these are going to be great for dry snow. So here you can see we've got a draw cord at the top that I added. This is traditionally just a shoelace that you tie at the top. I replaced that with some shock cord and a barrel lock, and that's going to essentially act as a gaiter. So this may look like an overboot, but it is not. Now, also the word muckluck actually comes from native Inuit tribes where they would use those big furry trapper boots. So traditional mucklucks kept their feet warm in some pretty ridiculous temperatures for a very long time before the invention of hot hands. So they obviously knew what they were doing. So the US military a very long time ago actually issued these boots and these also do a great job of keeping your foot warm. They're essentially a boot and gaiter all in one. And what I love about these boots is that they have a removable wool liner. Removable liners in boots are awesome because once it's time to go to bed, you have two options. You can hang these up to dry or put them at the bottom of your sleeping bag, or you can take off your dirty, wet, beat up boots, leave them outside of your sleeping bag, leave these nice warm booties on and go to bed in them. So that's why I really like these boots. And they're also extremely cheap. I got these for about 30 bucks. And another really cool thing about these is that they have wool insoles. Now, I actually use wool insoles in all of my boots, both the Danner Combat Hikers that I have and those Columbia Snow Boots. I have wool insoles like this coming from a company called Wool Power. These ones just come with them, but they actually use two. Two of these wool liners are gonna give you excellent standoff against the cold ground and insulate your feet. These treads do work pretty well in the snow. Um, they are not the comfiest boots in the world because they are so flexible. They don't give you any ankle support at all whatsoever, um, but it, they do keep your foot very warm. Now, of course, not all of us live in the Arctic, so most of us are going to be dealing with wet snow. So if you find yourself a really nice pair of warm boots, but you're finding that they're not very waterproof, it might be a good idea to get yourself some Gore-Tex overboots. Now, I know we already just looked at overboots, but these are not insulated. Something as warm as this, it's really just not necessary, um, but it's nice to have a to have a nice packable pair of Gore-Tex overboots depending on the conditions that you're gonna be in, right? So if you're dealing with really wet mud and stuff like that, this is not going to help you, but putting on a pair of overboots like these are gonna be great. Now, these overboots are actually made by New Balance. Yeah, add that to your list of companies that you hate now because they're part of the military industrial complex. Me personally, I think that that's pretty cool. New Balance is base. New Balance is joining Patagonia and Arcteryx in DOD heaven. So now as you can see, it secures with these two buckles. Uh, this is just going to keep it tight around your calf. It has a shock cord up on the top. And of course it has a, a strap down to keep that heel locked. These are a really well-made pair of overboots. And as you can see, there is in fact a heel welt at the back and they are fairly stiff, definitely stiffer than something like these Air Force boots. So if you were to do something silly, like put your mucklucks inside of your overboot that essentially takes your muckluck and then turns it into a B2 boot that can accept B2 crampons because of that heel welt and lack of toe welt. So you would need a toe bail. My Petzl Sarkins did not fit on here because the back of this boot is just way too wide. Uh, I'm not sure what crampon would work with these, but it's not gonna be the Petzl Sarkins. So, and here you can see we have a full wraparound 
Gore-Tex. So instead of like on the USGI ski march boot where they completely open up, this is a continuous piece of Gore-Tex or waterproof membrane. I'm not, I don't see anything that says Gore-Tex on here, but this is seam tape. This is a waterproof membrane. And this is not going to let any water into your boot from here down. So this is really cool. And they're also extremely, extremely packable. So you can put these in your pack and if conditions get really crappy, these might save your feet from trench foot. And here you can see on the bottom, we have Vibram soles. And like the USGI ski march boots, these are gonna be great for any kind of snowshoeing or deep powder activities. Next up, we're going to be talking about some of the coolest and most technical boots that I have. And that is going to be the B3 type boot. Now, of course, a B3 boot is going to use C3 crampons. So that's gonna be something like these Petzl Sarkins that I have here. But what makes this a B3 boot? Well, these are going to be the stiffest boots that you have. And as you can see, I can't just bend the sole, mainly because I'm a bouldering string bean, but also because these are meant to be as stiff as possible for mountaineering. These are the Bates Tora Bora mountaineering boots. If you know anything about Tora Bora, you'll understand why they're called that. These are super awesome. They're very, these are great for general mountaineering. So the extreme stiffness of these boots combined with this toe welt here means that you could use these for some ice climbing. Now, because they have a little bit of flex in them, that means that they might not be the best thing for something like waterfall ice, but they're going to be excellent for any kind of general mountaineering. These are insulated with about 200 grams of insulation. They have a very aggressive tread. They give you amazing ankle support. And these also come with removable comfort inserts. So if you are ice climbing and you're just kicking in all the time, that might actually keep your shin from getting too messed up. Now, when it comes to general mountaineering, these are an excellent pair of boots. These are going to keep your feet very warm and they're also going to be very technical and keep those crampons from coming off your feet. Now, these are military surplus, so that means that they are going to be a good deal cheaper than some other commercial options. However, special forces can be seen using these. That means it's gonna jack the price up a little bit more, but not too much. When it comes to ice climbing and mountaineering boots, those can usually be had for about 800 to thousand dollars. Whereas I got these for about 200. That toe and heel welt is essential when it comes to ice climbing. That little bit of flex might not be great for ice climbing, but it is great for mountaineering because it makes them more comfortable to walk in. They are made of full sanded or suede leather, as well as having some sort of plastic protector around here. And that's gonna protect your boot from Crampons. These silly little boot bayonets uh, are not going to be too great for any of your equipment that you're wearing, especially your pants and your boots. So over here, you can see that I have my other Tora Bora outfitted with a Petzl Sarkin crampon. The Petzl Sarkins are a great general purpose crampon. They not only use a toe clip and a heel clip, but you can also replace that toe clip with a toe bail, effectively making these a C2 and C3 crampon. Yes, a C3 boot is going to use C3 crampons. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Europeans. You guys are great. You are some of the most insightful in the comments as well as some of the most insulting. Love you guys. <laughs> they have uh, effectively like 14 points on them. And they have this piece of rubber at the bottom that's going to prevent snow from caking up in between the teeth. Um, you don't really have crampons anymore and you're joining your ice axe at the bottom of the mountain. So here on the front, you can see that it has these really aggressive front spikes. And those are gonna work for ice climbing because it's going to allow you to kick into that ice. And then these two backup spikes here are going to allow it to rest on that ice. I'll show you how this actually attaches. There is a lanyard that goes around the length of the boot. I don't like to undo that completely because that sucks. Uh, it has a heel clip in the back here. If you've ever done skiing, this will look very familiar to you. And then it'll just pull right off. It's very easy. So these are really awesome. And they also pack down really, really small. So if I collapse this thing all the way in and I wrap her up, this will fit very easily inside of your pack. So instead of having to carry an extra pair of boots for climbing, having a really good general purpose pair of boots 
are gonna do everything pretty okay. So you can traverse out to your climb, keep your same boots on, slap on some crampons if you didn't have them on already, and then you're good to go. Now, the last pair of boots we're going to be looking at are going to be plastic boots. Plastic boots are going to include ski boots, right? Ski boots are hard plastic boots. They have absolutely zero flex. My little arms will break before this boot bends. These are going to be the most technical. They're going to give you the best ankle support. And something that you might not know is that because these things have no flex in them at all, they can technically ice climb, technically. The only thing is these nice leather upper boots that have just barely a little bit of flex in them are going to be much more comfortable to walk in than something like these. And that is because a ski boot is going to position your ankle in a pretty strenuous position. So it's going to force your knee to bend and it's not too natural to walk in. However, these boots have this really cool function on the back that allows you to switch into walking mode. These are the Dalbello Pantera 120s, and these are really excellent ski boots, but they're not the best, and there are a lot more like it out there. Here you can see, just like any other ski boot, it's got a lot of buckles on here. When it comes to donning and doffing the boot, you can actually remove this liner from the inside. I'm going to edit out the absolute pain in the butt that it was to get this thing out. But most good ski boots have a removable liner in them. But this one specifically is an ID liner. ID liners are some of the best out there. They are heat moldable, but these are very comfortable liners. And it makes wearing a horrible plastic monstrosity to God a little bit easier to live with. But let's look at that hike function again. So when I undo this lock in the back here, that's actually going to allow the ankle to articulate. Now you don't get too many degrees of articulation, but it's just enough to get your knees a bit straighter because if you have your knees permanently bent and at a very aggressive angle, it's not easy to do anything other than downhill ski. But having those few extra degrees of movement are going to be great for ski touring. And we all know that most ski boots have a toe and heel welt, so that is going to not only allow us to use skis, but also allow us to use crampons. I, I will say that these, again, are not the best plastic ski boots on the planet. There are far better plastic boots out there that are much more comfortable to walk in, give you a lot more articulation of that ankle, and it also moves a lot more freely than these. Now, if you don't know what ski touring is, it is essentially skiing, but the way that God and Eugene Stoner intended. Not Eugene Stoner, wrong hobby, sorry. So essentially you'll have your hiking ski boot, and then you'll have a pair of skis with a touring binding on it. And that touring binding is going to allow the binding to let that heel release. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our ski boot, put it into that, put it into that binding, and now make sure that the heel is unlocked. Now we not only have articulation of our ankle, but it's also going to allow our heel to move freely. And then on the bottom of here, you would put some skins. I'm not putting those on right now because that's a nightmare. But yeah, I'll talk more about ski touring later, but I essentially just put touring bindings on my park skis and then Jerry rigs some skins onto them. So this is just my solution that I've come up with. You'll climb up the mountain, get to the top, rip those skins off the bottom of your skis, <clears throat> convert your binding back into a fixed position, put your foot back in the binding like that, and then you will remember to lock your heel again because no one forgets to lock their heel. And now you've converted back into ski mode and you will ski down that mountain. So thank you all so much again for watching. Let me know if you found any of this information helpful. Let me know what you found not helpful. If you think I got anything wrong or missed anything or just what works best for you. I'm really just having a good time learning at the same time you are. And thank you guys again so much for your support and your viewership on my first video. I, I'm just in absolute shock that my very first video is almost at a million views right now. That is insane. I, I can't tell you how thankful I am. But please make sure you like, subscribe, drop a comment, because all your support is only going to allow me 
to get new cool kit to not only show off, but to actually use. So make sure you join me in my next episode of Will It Kill Me Ice Climbing. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.